Hello, ladies. Hi, Lane. Hi, Karen. Yeah, no worries. I am taking it very, very slowly. Um, I am a little bit bruised, as you can see. This is, they had two ways of doing this. On this joint, they went in from here to inside here, and on this one, they went in from here. This is a rose thorn prick. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it does help. Uh, I barely have any pain right now, but I still want to take it fairly easy, you know, not without the grasping and, and stuff. Hi, Janine, and uh, I've been wearing my splints. Hi, Colleen. The thing is that with the splints, I cannot really do much. Actually, let me go grab one to show you. So these are special for the base of the thumb, osteoarthritis. Hi Sonia, hi Nicole, hi Lianca. And because they have Velcro, there's a lot of Finnegan and Connor here in them. But anyway, so they go like this. Let me move this somewhere. They go like this, then they get fixed around the wrist. And then one more time, oops, around the forearm. The thing is that they keep the thumb from going like this. And without being able to grasp, you can imagine there's not a lot of stuff that I can do. <laughs> and uh, it can get really unpleasant, especially when I have to go to the bathroom in a hurry. <laughs> because I have to first remove at least one of them. And when I have them on both hands, removing those Velcros, that does imply some grasping, so I can struggle with them. That's why I uh, decided to do something that would be easy on my hands today, and that would still be beautiful. And I would still be able to give you some, um, some tips. Uh, so, I remember that we did the other day, we did the, uh, I showed you how to do all kinds of um, pearlescence. Hi, Carlene. And the thing is that I've got uh, in time quite a few questions about doing a Skinner blends with uh, pearlescence and metallics. No, it has to be that those are pres prescription braces, Nicole. That's uh, and my doctor actually fought a lot to get me two because the insurance only wanted to pay for one, and they're like a hundred twenty something a piece. <laughs> so, um, because those are the only ones that stop the thumb from doing this motion. Uh, fortunately for me, the, the shots still help. When they will stop helping, I'm going to have to go for surgery. And uh, by what my doctor explained to me, in my case, the surgery involves removing a bone right here. Actually, let me show you real quick. Come on. I have some issues with this computer. I need to check it. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, so it would be this bone right here, the one that's called trapezium, because this is where I I don't have any more. Um, there's no more space between these two bones and they just rub one against the other. So something needs to be done. See like in here, this is the, the issue. But let's hope that the shots will be helping me for a long time. 
Hi, Yolanda. Hi, Kanchana. Hi, Malathi. Hi, Sandra. So, getting back to the Skinner Blend Mica Shift um, to explain real quick for newcomers to the craft what the Mica Shift is. Uh, mica uh, polymer clay is that is uh, sold or and known by either metallic or um, pearlescent. Yeah, it's very delicate. Uh, metallic or pearlescent is actually a transparent, a uh, translucent, not transparent, translucent clay that has mica particles in it. Now the mica uh, comes in um, flakes. That is, it's not round. It's like little flat flakes. I'm not gonna get up to get more of them, but. What does it mean? It means that you can do all kinds of effects using these clays because it will depend on how you cut the clay uh, depending on the position of the mica particles inside that translucent clay. Because what happens if, let's think that this is a mica flake, right? So if we have the mica flakes all aligned, what would happen whenever you uh, do go with it through the machine and all the mica particles get flat like this, you will see shiny. But whenever they start moving, kind of more and more and more and more, you see let's shiny up to dark opaque. And uh, when we press a stamp on one of these uh, clays, the mica particles will get shifted in various positions following the way that the stamp um, deforms the clay. And cutting the raised parts, shaving off the raised parts, will make an entirely new design beautiful design that looks like a 3D appearing on it. Now, the thing that you have to be always very careful with the mica shift is that you have to make sure that your clay is always perfectly shiny and it has no folding lines like you can see this one has right here because those would mar the whole effect. Now the problem when trying to create a mica shift using a Skinner blend of um, pearlescence metallics is the fact that obviously you don't need it to be this large. So you kind of need to keep it um, narrow if you don't because you are not going to make a piece that is this big. Now, the problem is that trying to keep it narrow, you're going to have to fan fold it. Now, if you fan fold it, you're going to get, no matter how many times you, you try until it gets, I mean, you can try until it gets again very wide because you're going to have the folding lines due to the mica, the particles of mica shifting. So, what can we do? And I'll show you how to actually obtain a good Skinner blend for a mica shift um, and keep it narrow. Hi Carla. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to easily fan fold it, right? It's, it's not difficult, it just takes a little bit longer than using a, a regular clay, one that doesn't have mica particles in it. So always careful with the ends because the ends will have the tendency to split, we'll go like this, and that's going to mess up your Skinner blend. And of course, there will be the unavoidable, actually they are avoidable, but only if you don't rush, um, air pockets. Now, the problem with the air pockets in a mica clay 
is that they are going to cause mica shift lines so you have to be very careful about it so i'm going to get this through the pasta machine and voila i have mica shift lines that will not go away very easily so what can you do you can just stretch and as you can see it did go a little bit awry but you stretch it so that you have and make sure that you go pretty much line on line as much as possible I want to keep it very thin so I can do a good and then I'm going to show you another trick with all this and just keep keep it stretched out and see I'm going from the fold away so I can eliminate the air bubbles and this one is getting a little out of place and at the end here Depending on the colors you're using, it might take anywhere between 20 and 40 passes with the machine. But you will get rid of the fan folding mica shift line without getting your clay to widen up. And as you can notice I choose the one where the Skinner blend is better than the other one you are going to get some areas where uh, there would still be some of the color under the other color don't worry this will just make the whole thing prettier and then I'll show you something that you can do using these lines As you can see I'm almost there I'm gonna probably need to do like two more folds Because whenever you do the mica shift and Skinner blend, you will get an effect that's kind of like a Skinner blend Mokume Gane mica shift. They're all <laughs> together, like one more time. I still want to get rid of this line that's a little bit too harsh here. Now, what I'm going to use, hi Darla, <laughs> you know I had this for, a, for like a week now, actually my fingernails started growing out of it, I just happened to have them. What I'm going to use next is this, hi Sharon, 
and it's one of my most favorite and uh, let me see if it is still on Amazon too see if it is still on Amazon if not you might want to go to cool tools US uh, and there we go okay switching to the so in the um, texture sheets and stuff we go texture sheets pins etc so right here and it is a cool tools it's a small one fortunately they raised the price but everything raised the price here Ev here there and everywhere I don't know how it is where you are, but where I am, it's darn cold. So this is with ocean waves. There you go. And there are two of them. Uh, a lot of times with cool tools, you would get one stamp and then the reverse stamp. What does that mean? That means that uh, whatever is inside in one of them is outside in the other so you can create different types of so mine is a reverse so getting back to it I thought that I just thought that uh, come on see it's got I think it might be doing some antivirus going on or something it takes forever for it to think about what it's supposed to do yeah we had like 20 21 degrees this morning early by 9 or 10 o'clock it was 26 so so I'm going to go ahead and work with it So first I'm going to kind of get it set on here. Then I'm going to add a little bit of armor roll. And yeah, that was uh, the whole thing with my shots. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Uh, I should be much better. I mean, I am already much better. It's just a little bit sore and I'm trying not to do too much. Not to overwork. So, uh, yeah, it was a little bit unexpected because I was initially supposed to go in April and they called me uh, Wednesday that they had the cancellation and if I wanted to, I could come Thursday. So, of course, I jumped on it. Okay, now I'm going to try and get this properly and I need to see my screen. Uh, if you're wondering what happens is that there is a slight delay between what I'm doing here and what you see on, the, on your screen. So it's like, I don't know, like six seconds, seven seconds, something like that. And I do this setting to help for people who do not have a very fast internet connection so they don't have to wait for the video to be buffering. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, and I thought that this texture would be the perfect thing for this specific Skinner blend. So, yeah, and I don't know, I noticed something, Darla. Uh, the, the whole barometer thing is weird lately because before it was, we were going to get a, a storm. 
the barometer would go down, you would hurt until the storm would be over, and that would be it. But now, barometer keeps going down before the low system gets here. That's why it's called the low system, right? Um, and sometimes stays low after the system is gone. So, and it has been going very low. I mean, I haven't seen the barometer going to 29 or lower, unless we had some really severe tornadic storms or some um, hurricane remnant storm. And where are my glasses? Right there. Well, I've been getting, you know, like, I, I got my small collection within years. You know, I would get one, one month, then another one, two months from then, and so on. I am not in any way associated with them, so there's nothing I profit from that. Uh, a few of them, people were kind. I had them on my wish list on Amazon, and people were kind and got them for me. So, alrighty, now. For this, if you are newer to my channel and you do not know this, uh, these are the best blades that you can get for shaving, both for mica shifts and for mokumegane. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, on, in my Amazon store, but um, Trish from polyclayplay.com and please use my affiliate link when you buy from there has these I bought them before she got the, the set but you can get for four dollars seventy five a set of a very they are very thin very flexible and very sharp uh, and you get an eight inch one and a four inch one for four seventy five it's a set and they uh, these are the best to slice canes fairly thin if you have issues slicing canes without smushing the clay too much then uh, the other thing for doing really good high niche D uh, re doing really good shaving get a paper towel with armor all on it and after not after each each shaving but kind of like after every second or third shaving uh, wipe it wipe the blade so that it would go smoother it wouldn't stick to the clay so I'm going to go I don't need all 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 of it and the other thing and I'm always uh, some artists prefer to bend the blade like this and shave with the downmost part. Um, I cannot trust my hands to do a good job when doing that because I don't trust my hands to do a good job and also you just go on small spots. So what I do, let's imagine that uh, this is the tile I work on. So I put, and don't worry, it will not cut you when you do this. Otherwise, be careful when you take them from the case because they're going to be sharp. But what I do, I do set, see, I hold the blade on my thumb and I keep the same distance as I go down. I do bend slightly the, bla the blade, but this bend is not as uh, sharp as I've seen some other people doing it. And more power to them that they can do that. I cannot do it. So if you have hands issues like I do, oh joy, my neighbor got her kids out. I don't know what this girl does. I mean, my neighbor, she's like in her 
definitely early 20s. She's got kids that look to be like, I don't know, five, six. She's not married. I see her, she doesn't have full custody of the children or someone is taking care of their, her children because I see them here only over the weekend pretty much. Sometimes, rarely during the week, once in a while. But otherwise she's barely at home and whenever she's at home, I keep smelling pot. I have a very, very sensitive sense of smell. I know I can smell it even if my front door is closed, if you can imagine that. No, it's the kids outside, because her, her kids, that's awesome, Darren. Her kids have only two settings. One is off and one is screen. And unfortunately, the screen setting seems to be on like 90% of the time. You think somebody's killing them. And not only that, but they are extremely badly behaved. They have absolutely no, no concept of personal space, of respect for adults, of anything. I had to be very abrupt and brusque with them. It's a, it's a mess. I pity them, honestly. Not only that, but my neighbor, she's a slob. There's always all kinds of crap on her driveway, and unfortunately, her house is on the west of me. And in Oklahoma, the wind always blows from the west. So, pretty much every time we have wind, which is four days out of five, I have to pick up her trash from my front yard, which doesn't make me too happy. Okay, I still have here some. But yeah, now you can see why I wanted this specific texture with ocean waves for this specific in a blend. Okay, let's take a look at it. No, oh, she smokes in her driveway pretty much and her driveway is right next to my entrance door. Okay, I guess after I put some uh, some resin on, on it, you'll be able to see it much better. Now, the next thing, what I recommend, and I always recommend it, because if you try to burnish this, this is going to be not very a very happy thing, because obviously you're going to change a little bit the... Um, position of the mica particles that are on the very top. You change them even by dragging the blade when you're shaving. So the best thing to obtain a perfect mica shift is to sand after you're done. So a moment you sand after you're done, uh, you are going to remove that microns thing, a uh, thick layer that's on top of the clay and it will bring out your mica shift even more. Even if you don't decide to buff and you just decide to resin on top, but it is a good thing to do that if you want to get very beautiful, beautiful mica shift. And there's a side note back in the 80s and uh, early 90s, very early 90s, 
the mica shift was done by sanding <laughs> we didn't have all these blades so yeah anyway so let's go back to it and I'm going to try and find which of them do I want I want one with the least lines because you're gonna get some lines as you shave right so let me grab like this one and I'm going to put some resin on it so you can see how it comes out and then the rest I'm going to redo it so I can do again the fan fold but I'm going to be much faster about it because we are not going to need the, the whole stretch and fold and stretch and fold okay and my glasses and toothpick and um, I found it's much harder for me to work but I still found a little turn around to be able to work a little bit on some videos before I can afford to get the graphics card I can work on my laptop but it's much harder for me because obviously the laptop has a 17 inch screen and uh, my eyes have problems I mean you know that I have issues with my eyesight but I still can work on some not make very long and very and if you ask why I don't bring the laptop to tape here well or to do other stuff here you know like lives and stuff until I can afford to get the graphics card well the problem is that uh, I have a big laptop as I said it's a 17 inch and number one I would have to make room for it on the table among all everything else and number two I do not have enough USB ports for it to be able to have at the same time cameras and microphones and all the other stuff that I use for uh, videos so but at least I can do a little bit of editing on it fold and then what we are going to do is simply do the mica shift on the fan fold I know it sounds weird but trust me it works I'm trying to figure out why do I have a skull mold on my table there's no way that Finnegan could have stole that. And it, it was in my mold box. It's because I'm going to use the other side. Okay. 
No, I cannot use the other side. Let me just go one once. Or two times. Okay, we are going to go with this. But this one is done. My hands are starting to hurt a little bit. So let me refocus here. Yeah, my antivirus is working on stuff. So it's slowing down my. see the whole waves thing now you can do this like this or you can do this with uh, oh, how do I say layers of less refined uh, Skinner blend that would have and you can put them one on top of the other that would have the white coming more in a line like this and then you'll get the white of the um, of the waves more stronger okay and grandma Lisa Pavelka do this if you wonder where are where are I get these check in my uh, Amazon influencer store they are big cosmetic pads I think they are in the miscellaneous or in tools or in both this so this this is a Lisa Pavelka texture and it is called illusionary and it's one of my most favorite textures and I think you can find it both in Amazon and and Polyclay Play And it's very deep and it's excellent for uh, stamped Mokumegane and for mica shift. It's fabulous. Almost did this sausage. Okay. Now, just uh, for a little bit of discussion to the side got some questions about how can I everybody is doing pretty much the same thing how can I be a little bit different and especially I don't want to have other people saying I'm copying them well let me tell you a little secret if you are using um, the most common cutters and textures 
it will be pretty much the same old, same old. It will be very hard for anyone to to claim any kind of copying whenever it's just, I mean, there are tutorials for those specific cutters and textures and all that. Let's get it in onto the side. So just do your own style cutting. You can do your own textures. I think I have two or three tutorials on how to do your own textures. There's plenty of other tutorials on how to do your own textures. So um, that would be one thing. Make your own colors and color combinations. Okay, so this I'm not gonna even put uh, resin on because you can already see. And the lines just add. So when you leave the lines, your best bet is to use something that's more geometrical, not so much flowerish, because it will add extra stuff on it. So yeah, try to do your own colors, try to do your own combinations. Um, your best bet, ah, mm, sorry, I moved my, I'm weird. Uh, your best bet is um, to check on the color palettes that are that year and check on the combinations, but again, do something of your own. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, most, and this is the, the thing that you must not fall into. Uh, most of the people who start uh, doing clay, they will go for the main thing and uh, they would go a lot for the so-called embroidery, you know, whenever, whenever you do those little thin things and then you put, um, you create with them, you know, like you get make one real quick to explain exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm not trying to disappoint you or to discourage you from doing anything. I'm just trying to tell you how you can stand out. Okay, so what I'm talking about, you know, is all those things that you do this and then you start making little spirals like this and little all kinds of stuff and flowers and the thing is that in order to do that and make it look good not make it look like some <coughs> seventh grade beginner would do you do need a lot of experience to um, keep everything nice and pretty and looking good number two most of that style of uh, because especially if you if you want to make some money by selling stuff, most of that style is not <laughs> not in style. It's very 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 outdated. So you better go with some very simple, you know, something like this, a trying like a mokumegane, <coughs> and just simple colors. You can use this and then use two smaller ones to make a necklace. It would go over much faster than doing a very complicated, all kinds of little spirals and, and things. Um, now, even if, like the retro cane, the retro cane, the regular retro cane was very much an, in vogue 10, 15 years ago, but nowadays you have to go for something you can use the retro canes, but use the newest twists. Use it like, for example, um, do a semi-full um, turtle shell using translucent. And remember, I showed you the other, I forgot, like two weeks ago, how to do a, um, actually, hold on, let me see. I think I have it somewhere here. I need to do something with it. How to do like this. 
do something so you would get uh, something like a full turtle shell so you'd use translucence that would, that would go from pure translucence to uh, cinnamon and s more sienna-ish umber, umber uh, brown so that way you will stand out try to create your own color combinations and there are some that are tried and true and if you notice mm, uh, pretty much all the artists that are out there and they are considered real artists and uh, like uh, Lloyd Dever is uh, they are in, in museums they do kind of have their own color palette and especially very important is the finishing um, thank you Colleen don't try getting too complicated uh, ju the jewelry in in polymer clay if you go too small it becomes a blur and if you use too many colors it becomes a blur I'm not saying it's not fun to make some um, costume jewelry and stuff but that will not sell a lot because uh, you know not a lot of people wear that and it requires quite a bit of work and quite a bit of material and you're not going to to be able to sell it but if you try and do yes imitation of silver and imitation of gemstones but not in the style of costume jewelry or replicas but looking look online you can see what's the most um sought after style of jewelry like you've seen me I, I did some jewelry that was in the Constantinos style that is a very modern type of uh, jewelry but not so in essence try to make your own shapes try to make your own textures try to make your own colors and color combinations and go more towards simpler things with the colors very well defined don't try to put too much on there uh, don't try to crowd stuff don't try to make stuff that's super tiny I mean it's different if you make beads with little Mille Fiori you know the micro cane flowers that's one thing but if you try to do something on pendants and stuff it's gonna get lost so try to have and remember I explained a while ago I think during a live how to, to whenever you create a piece you have to always have you have the piece and you always have to have a focal point where the eye is attracted to and then a secondary focal that kind of balances the focal point and you'd have like for example yes you can have a a silvery sting and then you put a point of red in one corner and then in another kind of like not opposite you don't want to go opposite you want to go a little bit asymmetrical so go like this you can put two black points or if you go for a silver type imitation to red to red point or blue points or something I'll try and see if I can give an example of not costume jewelry but still imitation of metal and stones thing we'll see I'll see how my hands feel now I'm gonna have to cut it short because I'm starting to hurt <laughs> so I'm going back to my splints and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will be able to use the tips I showed you and remember it's like two times away to was it two weeks away let me see no it was last week when I showed how to do no yeah it was last week when I showed how to do uh, your own per lessons and this is using 
Most of it I use the black diamond iridescent blue. Okay, thank you so much. Don't forget to sum me up. And I hope to be able to to put up something sooner than later. And I'll see you next Sunday. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Mm, bye.